This presentation is brought to you by the Arkansas Association of High School Officials. These are timing rules for the Central Arkansas Pee Wee Football League, governed by the National Federation of High School Rules. We'll start off talking about the length of the game. Third and fourth grade games will be eight minutes in duration. I should say they're eight minute quarters. Fifth and sixth grade games are nine minute quarters. All games are governed with the junior high hurry up rule. Let's talk about now when the clock starts. Naturally, you start the game with a free kick. The clock starts when the receiving team touches the ball in the field of play. The clock also starts if it's stopped following any legal snap. The exception for this is the snap on the try following a touchdown. We could also have an untimed down if the officials extend the quarter or the half because of a penalty. Here's more on clock starts. Following a change of possession, the clock starts on the ready for play. The exception for this is if the previous play ended with an incomplete pass or a run out of bounds. Here are some examples. Fourth and ten for Team A at the 50 yard line. The quarterback drops back and throws an incomplete pass. The ball is awarded for Team B because Team A failed to make the line to gain on fourth down. So Team B would now have the ball first and 10 at the 50-yard line, and the clock, because the previous play ended with an incomplete pass, would start on the snap. Here's another example. Fourth and 10 for Team A at the 50-yard line. The quarterback scrambles, unable to find a receiver. He runs the ball to the Team B 42-yard line where he steps out of bounds. The clock is stopped because Team A's possession series has ended. The ball is awarded to Team B at the 42-yard line because the quarterback stepped out of bounds before making the line to gain on fourth down. The ball is for placed on the Team B 42-yard line, first and 10 for Team B. The clock again will start on the snap because the previous play ended with the quarterback carrying the live ball out of bounds. Now let's look at those plays where we'd have the clock start on the ready for play. Fourth and 10 for Team A at the 50-yard line. The quarterback throws a, compl a completed pass, and the ball carrier is tackled at the B45 yard line. The clock stops because a fourth down play, the possession series for A, has ended. Team B would be awarded the ball because Team A is five yards short of the line to gain on fourth down. So the ball would be first and ten for Team B at the 45 yard line. The previous play did not end in an incomplete pass, nor did it end with the runner carrying a live ball out of bounds so the referee would signal the ready for play and to start the game clock. The game clock would run at the ready for play whistle. Here's another example where the game clock would start on the ready for play whistle. Team A's ball, fourth and 10 at the 50 yard line. The quarterback scrambles, unable to find a receiver, he runs but is tackled in bounds at the B45 yard line. The clock is stopped because Team A's possession series has ended with a fourth down play that did not make the line to gain. The ball would be awarded to Team B. It would be their ball first and 10 from the B 45 yard line and the clock would start on the ready for play. Anytime a team declares a punt, since we do not punt in this league, the ball is moved 30 yards up the field, placed at the inbounds line and the clock is started on the ready for play. Any punt declared by a team will result in the clock being started on the ready for play whistle. Now let's talk about when the clock stops. Although we've mentioned a few instances, let's go over it and be more specific. When any player carries a live ball out of bounds, the clock stops. The clock does not start on these plays until the next legal snap, regardless of which team is the next to snap the ball. The clock also stops on all incomplete passes. Again, the clock would not start until either team legally snapped the ball. The clock also stops to award any team a first down. Now, depending on how the previous play ended, if Team A was awarded a first down, but the ball carrier carried the live ball out of bounds, the clock would not stop would not start until the ball was legally snapped. 
But if the runner ends in bounds, we stop the clock to award the series, and then we start the clock again on the ready for play. The clock also stops at the dead ball whistle for any player where a penalty marker is thrown. Let me correct myself, not any player, any play. At the dead ball whistle for any play where a penalty marker is thrown, the clock will stop. The clock status will be returned by the referee depending on how the previous play ended. The clock will also stop following any scoring play. The clock will stop following any kick play as well. Let's talk about intervals when we have a dead clock. The clock is always dead for the try. This, by rule, is an untimed down. We also have a dead clock for any team timeout. Following a team timeout, the clock will not start until the ball is legally snapped. The clock is also dead during any official's timeout. The status of the clock is determined by the previous play, and the referee will indicate by either winding the game clock or blowing a simple ready for play the appropriate status of the clock.